I, I usually I'll think of something from either my life or to be honest, your life, because I know you'll respond well to the stories from your life. Um, and then I'll try to think of how that could fit with a character. For example, I there's an episode that's coming up where Linda takes Louise and Jean to a fire station open house. Yeah. And she stays a little too long, and she overstays her welcome to the point where they just really want her out. And that's a true story from my life. Yep. The firefighters in my neighborhood don't even look at me anymore. <laughs> so dog, and the, I just wanted my kids to get in the truck over and over again, but even my kids are like, we're done. So it's that kind of thing where you try to think of, you have stories from your life where you hear about stories, and you try to think of how that makes sense for our characters. When you started, um, not unlike myself, you did not have kids. Do you find it's easier to write for the show now that you have a family? A, a little bit. The perspective of Lynn and, and Bob as parents, yeah, yep. definitely relate to much more and be more. Yeah, I feel like I have more sort of authentic voice for that. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you regret having children? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know that it helps the show, but in your life, do you are like, wow, oh, that was. No. I only, I'm saying, do you only like your children because of. That they have like my children. Show. It, like, the show. Like, the for a long time. It's been used to this gentleman. Look, I, I love my kids, but it's been I, it, helpful. It, it came off as not that way. But, uh, I guess up to interpretation. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, Dan. Dan Mitz. You are an entertainer. Uh, you always you like to put on show for a crowd. You you get in front of uh, many crowds as a stand-up comedian, and yet you're also a shy guy. And uh, you came to the when you were told that we didn't have Eugene and Kristen. What was your reaction? Um, it, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, when we when we started doing Comic Con and stuff like that, I was very nervous about having to be put on the spot with. Questions and then I realized everyone else talks so much I never have to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's your voice that everyone wants to hear the most. <laughs> keep talking. <laughs> keep going. But, um, I feel like John Roberts talks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, all right, Melissa, you're a performer. You um, also have a very unique uh, job that you agreed to help us out with. You sort of have a unique uh, relationship with these actors, some of whom you've been working with for a long, long time. I should say, Melissa worked uh, on Dr. Cat's Professional Therapist, on home movies, both uh, behind the microphone. She produced the show with me and in front of the microphone. Um, so we asked her, because she lives uh, in New York, near New York, uh, we asked her to help us. And because you thought I would do such a good job. And because we thought she would do such a good job, it. yes. Uh, not just here in New York. Uh, <laughs> we asked her to be kind of our talent coordinator in New York because uh, many of these performers uh, live in or near New York. And uh, so we record uh, bi coastally, if you will, using an ISDN hookup. What is the weirdest thing? that anyone has asked you to get them at a recording session John for Oxford. Yeah, I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I get all my own stuff. I post made it myself. I don't know what she's talking about. Let me think of what I can, what's a legal thing I can say. <laughs> what does he ask for? Are you there? I mean, I know. I just want you to <laughs> ask. I'm not, you know, running out, you know. The weird Wait, part. What? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I, you just said this isn't the 80s. I'm not running out. Well, if it was the 80s, I would be, like, in shoulder pads. And, you know. Wait, did you play football? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wore shoulder pads in the 80s. It was a thing. Okay. Uh, so why did you run out with your shoulder pads? Because <laughs> I, just, it's your job. <laughs> Every single day. Every single day at some oh. point, 
while in the booth, John Roberts will say, Melissa, can I have a margarita pizza, please? <laughs> not, they not even wanting one. And then the other request... Yeah, I don't even You've never gotten one. Yes, never gotten one. I've never... No. But, <laughs> and the other request was, of course, the Carvel cookie uh, puss. Cookie puss. Cookie puss cake. Is there Carvel here? Yeah. No? Yeah, Carvel. Carvel. You did get a cookie puss one. We did yeah. get it once, but that was the day after he moved to L.A. That's right. We got pictures of all of us. All right. Yeah. So screwed it. Yeah. yeah. That was a good time. I'm taking yeah. it anyway. I'm tasting right now. The other, if I could just say, Lauren, I don't know if you recall, but the way, the way you pitched to me to come do what I was doing was, all the talent is in New York except for Dan at the time, and it's kind of like the inmates are running the asylum. Do you remember saying that? The inmates are running the asylum, can you go and be the warden? And it sounded like a job offer to me, so. Yeah. The, and the studio where, where we record is really just you, us two, Melissa, and Larry, Larry who do it in New York, uh, used to serve wine. So there was. At least two seasons where I was drunk the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it, was it, it was fun. I think it was season six and seven. <laughs> if you go back and listen, uh, yeah, absolutely right. wasted. Right. That <laughs> yeah, worked. Uh, the uh, and all of them movies. <laughs> John Roberts. <laughs> yes. Melissa then has to uh, very frequently change the hat she's wearing, so to speak, and come into the booth and become a, a voiceover artist. Yep. How describe the kind of crap that you give her when she's just trying to do these two jobs? Uh, what, is this? what is this? A uh, hit job? <laughs> uh, no, uh, no. I never give Melissa any crap. Um, we, it's. Uh, it's like having a legend in the booth. It's like Barbara Streisand in a voiceover. This is like my aircraft dude. Everyone, nobody picks on anyone um, like John. John picks on all of us. Uh, he's the best. Anything, I mean, he's cruel. John Benjamin, describe working with John Roberts. I hate it. I hate it. He loves me. He loves me so much. It's sad. We we have a difficult relationship. <laughs> he's in love with me. He basically thinks I'm Linda. He I'm thinks he's Bob. Uh, it's, 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 it is. It's playing the role too much. You're, I'm not Linda. Leave me alone. Stop calling me. Stop stalking me. Showing up at my house. I'm just not going to happen. <laughs>
whole bunch of episodes this fall. I think in the past, and I don't, we, it's the kind of complaining that we love. You guys have been like, hey, you're on, then you're off, then you're, you know, three, three weeks with repeats or uh, preemptions. But because at 9 o'clock you have fewer preemptions, uh, we're, we're going to hit you with a bunch of episodes this fall. Yeah. Just pitch you the premise and then tell you the, what the character that's returning. The premise is the name is called The Ring But Not Scary. <laughs> and, in which uh, Bob finally gets Linda an engagement ring. Finally! Um, and then uh, it becomes lost. Uh, and uh, Matt, the limo driver, uh, returns. We follow, so we don't go right into Halloween after several repeats. No, no, no. We have a bunch of episodes before Halloween. We have uh, Boys Just Want to Have Fungus, where Bob and Sheep go mushroom hunting. We have Motor Sheep Boat, uh, written by Holly, with, uh, where you see the Thunder Girls uh, again. The team is uh, Nemesis Troop 257. Those naughty girls. Uh, then we get uh, Halloween, uh, a, a great episode. Pink Trouble in Little Ch in Little Tina. Pink Trouble in Little Tina, which is not an homage to uh, Big Trouble in Little China. It's an homage to Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, and yeah, and uh, that's uh, where basically a fetal pig um, haunts Tina. Uh, we then have a uh, an episode that takes place almost entirely in 